So we have a lot of amazing stuff to share with you today. So let's dive right in. Please welcome Terry White, who's going to show you some of the most requested. He has some fans out there. That's great. Uh, some requested new features we've added to our products. Um, really major improvements I know you'll love. And how we're using Adobe Sensei, the artificial intelligence engine behind a lot of what we do to help you create more in record time. Terry. Thanks, Scott. <clears throat> I am so excited to be here today to not only show you some of my favorite new features across desktop and mobile, but also some of the performance enhancements along the way. So let's get to it. But well, speaking of performance, I'm gonna start here in Photoshop, and this may seem like a little thing, but if you've ever created a new document in Photoshop, and you wonder why that new document dialog box takes three, four, five seconds to come up, you'll be happy to know that it's now instantaneous. A little thing, but it goes a long way every single day. Next up, let's talk about free transform. Last year, I introduced not having to hold down the shift key. We got your feedback. And now you want that experience to not only be consistent across pixel and vector layers, but you want to be able to toggle it based on your preference. And that preference is now sticky. So whatever you choose, that's the way it's going to be. So let's go into Warp, one of my favorite new capabilities. Now, I, I switched to Warp. I didn't get the standard 3 by 3 grid because I can go from 3x3 three three all the way up to 5x5, five five, and, and if that's not enough, I can click to add my own custom points wherever I need them along the way, and I get the ability to hold down the Shift key and select multiple points at the same time so that I can transform this flower to make it a little wider and a little taller, just like that. <laughs> Next up, let's take a look at making selections. In the past, I might have used Adobe Sensei's power select subject, which in this case, it would think all of the food is the subject. But what if I only want one thing? Now with the new object select tool, even in the shape of a rectangle, I can just go ahead and make a selection, and Adobe Sensei figures out what I was trying to select and does it for me. <laughs> even if I come down to a pepper and do that, it figures out that I wanted the pepper and makes that selection for me. Now, wait, what if it's more intricate? The tool can be switched from a rectangle to a lasso, so that even if I go around one of the zucchini, and I'm using a mouse to do this, so this won't be pretty, I go around it, and Adobe Sensei figures out that I only wanted the one and does it for me. <laughs> Selections will never be the same going forward. But wait. Why do we make selections in the first place? We typically make selections so that we can take the object off the background or remove the background. Well, what if Adobe Sensei could do that all in one step for you? What if it could figure out what the subject is and remove it from the background in one click with one new button here in the Properties panel called Remove Background? Just like that. Now, I know what you're thinking. That was too quick. I got to see that again on a different image. Click. Yep. It does it on that one, too. And this truly is how Skynet got started. All right. Switching gears. Now, this beautiful image created by artist Isabel LeMay, she creates these images from scratch with literally hundreds, if not thousands, of layers. And this is a five gigabyte file, so we're going to talk about performance, but more importantly, when you get a file like this, especially from an artist, typically the layers may not be named as best they could. <laughs> so in this case, I've got a lot of background copies here, but that's OK. I need to know what's on the layer, so now with the new zoom to layer capability, I can hold down my option key and just click, and it will zoom to that layer and show me what's on it. I can isolate it and then name that layer. And let's do that one more time, zoom to layer, isolate the layer, see what's on it, and know exactly what's on my layers going forward with extreme performance now in Photoshop. <laughs> now I'm going to switch gears. We're going to switch over to Illustrator. Illustrator's all about vectors. And of course, in this version, it's all about performance as well. I've got literally thousands of vectors selected here. But wait, let's zoom out, because that's going to take a minute, right? Nope, instantaneous zooming with thousands of vectors in Illustrator, GPU performance is amazing. <laughs> I love it. Now, wait about, what, what about drawing those paths? Now again, I, I mentioned that I don't have my Wacom stylus here, I'm just using a mouse, so this is not gonna be great. 
I'll do the best I can. Too many points. Well, with a new, improved, simplified path, I can go to path, simplify, and it, it figures out, hey, we don't need that many points for that path. Let's take it from 28 down to four without changing the shape just like that. So you'll, you'll love those inform, imp, imp, improvements on Simplify Path in Illustrator. Now, switching gears to InDesign. InDesign gets a speed boost. It now launches 25% faster than the previous version. But the problem we're going to solve today is the client doesn't like that image. <laughs> I'm trying not to take it personally, because I took this image in Malmo, Sweden, of the turning torso. But they want a different tower. I don't have a different tower. So now in InDesign, I can right-click, find similar images. It will source Adobe stock, go out and look for images like this, show me tower images. I see the one I want. I just drag it over. I can replace that one with this one. And if it's too big, I can select it and use the new or improved content-aware fit to fit it down. Now, if, I don't, if, I, if they do like that one, I can even license this image right on the canvas without having to go back to the library and figure out where I got it from. All right, now speaking of images. Thank you. Speaking of images, as a photographer, I love Lightroom. I use Lightroom every single day. And I've got Lightroom here running on an Android device. And What's new in Lightroom that I love now, both on mobile and desktop, are new interactive tutorials. And you might think, oh, tutorials, it's another video. No. If I tap on this tutorial by Randy and start the tutorial, the first thing it does is it downloads the image into my device so I can continue working. It then walks me through step by step the steps that Randy took to get this. And that little guide is showing me what sliders to move. If I move the slider and I go a different way, it's okay. I can experiment with what that slider does to see what Clarity does, but then I can go ahead and lock it in on the one I'm supposed to. Then I go to the next tab for lighting. I can see what exposure does, and then still come back to where I'm supposed to in this tutorial. And I can keep going through and see shadows, see what shadow detail will do until I'm on, uh, on the spot that I'm supposed to be on. Now, that's step-by-step -step interactive tutorials. But wait, there's more. Let's go back, close this, scroll up to the discovery area. Because in the discovery area, it's not so much about learning step-by-step. -step, it's about seeing cool images and techniques, tapping on one. And instead of you walking through step-by-step, -step, you can just scroll through the edits to see what they were. And if you like the look of this final image, you can go in and download that as a preset to apply to your images going forward, all in Lightroom on mobile and desktop. I've got one more thing. Let's head back to Photoshop. Speaking of capturing the look of things, I love the colors in this image. If I wanted to create a color theme in the past, I might have pulled out my phone, used Adobe Capture, and pointed maybe at the screen or at the scene to capture those color themes. Well, today, we no longer have to worry about that because we're bringing the capture experience to the desktop for the first time. So I can go in to my libraries, click the plus sign, and there's a new option, Create from Image, and it brings up the Adobe Capture experience right in Photoshop. So I can capture patterns for the first time seamlessly, vector shapes, color themes, which is what I want. So I can drag the color stops around to get the exact color themes that I want, once I do that, I can save it to my library. And for the first time, both on mobile and desktop, seamless gradients from your image or from a source file. Here we go. If I need more stops, no problem. I can drag the slider, get more stops, and get the exact color themes that I'm looking for seamlessly, all in Adobe Capture on the desktop for the first time. And those are just a few. And those are just a few of my favorite things on the desktop and mobile, as well as performance enhancements.